Welcome to the third recording of Anglican Unscripted, episode 366, because it's Friday and it's chaos here, it's chaos there, it's chaos everywhere. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger, and today's February 2nd, 2018. So I'm betting there'll be more interruptions with this recording, the third one, than the first two put together. Uh, I bet the lights, the batteries die any minute now, but let's go. George, how are you doing this week? I'm miserable, Kevin. I am absolutely miserable. As uh, you can tell, I'm bright red, and it's not because I live in sunny Florida or no. that I have high blood pressure. Both are true. <laughs> we had our year out, uh, year end closing of the finance committee meeting, and I was told by the treasurer, George, we've discovered we've made a mistake. Your pay is one month in arrears. Well, we need to catch up with that, and we're going to give you your second paycheck this month. Nice. And I said, man, that's fantastic, because I've got a tuition bill that I was going to have to get a parent plus student loan to pay the University of Florida for my daughter. And so here, I can pay it on time. She can start school, and she will love me, continue to love me, because the money's flowing. So today is when I was going to get my second paycheck. Well, I got a little note saying, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. Oops. We didn't. We are not a month in arrears. Mm -hmm. And see, I'm wearing a tie today because I'm going to hang myself after the service, after the show, because I am just so ir- because it's. So, I know. It's not that they owe me the money. No, but. they don't. They they just gave you miscommunication. They were excited to. T- they want. They gave you good news as far as they're concerned. By the way, George. We got a little extra money because we're a little behind in paying you. And oops, the, oh, I guess we made a mistake. Um, but George, you were counting your chickens before they're hatched. I counted them, <laughs> raised them, and fried them before they hatched, Kevin. So it's going to be a little frugal over uh-huh. the few next few months as uh-huh. I try to recoup. And uh, so that means... Uh, uh, having to eat at McDonald's instead of Wendy's. Well, that's We're fun, getting yeah. regular low test instead of high octane gas. Going to Walmart oh. instead of Target. I, I see how that works down there. Yeah, it's. Oh, uh, not, I always, you know, for Anglican TV and for uh, um, my, my business, use paid uh, help for the financials. Uh, first, I don't want to end up in prison. And. Uh, uh, second, it just one less thing to worry about. But George, be anxious and nothing. Uh, people have been asking, how's your health? We know you had an infection in your leg. You're getting intravenous or some type of pill for the infection. What's going on? Still there. It's a staph infection. My leg is getting better. I'm also on a steroid to uh, treat the side effects of the uh, antibiotics. It's uh, It's... It's a miserable time, Kevin. So let's talk about the Anglican world so I can really be nasty. Nasty, huh? I, <laughs> You're I, mean, the perfect I want to mood. take out I want to take out my anger and my frustration <laughs> and my rage on a worthy topic. A worthy. Like the Diocese of Washington. That's right. Uh, well, for for those of you who have been paying attention and we they've been in our news show before. Uh, if you go back I think two years um, at the House of Bishops, the bishop at the Diocese of Washington got up and said why are we talking about you know planting gardens and having all the the frivolity of uh, church life when our churches are empty? You know that people are pouring out of them. We need to do something. And I'm like, yeah, well, that'll never happen. Then I see in the news uh, from this weekend, uh, Jeff Walton posted a story that uh, the Diocese of Washington has decided, and we'll we'll use my big line later, that G- God. Is genderless and they have the ability to vote that into existence they did uh, really to protect people and and people know people from Washington are snowflakes and so doing so uh, the diocese has now protected all the people in their congregations from that mean bad male God he was not female he's now genderless George now I know this is crazy. Well actually you had one priest Jeff had a line where uh, one woman priest got up and said, now El Shaddai, El Shaddai is a god with breasts. <sighs> oh, oh, George. I mean, we, we, Kevin, we really shouldn't complain about Bishop Mary and Buddy in the Diocese of Washington because they keep us in business. They do. You know, good news just doesn't sell. I'm sorry, folks, if you want to hear about 
oh, how wonderful things are in this diocese and that diocese. Nobody cares. No. But when the Diocese of Washington or the Diocese of Newark or California go off the rails, people love to hear the craziness. Yeah. Well, they do. And this is you and I complained when Catherine Jeffers uh, Shore said she's stepping down. You know, I'm going to retire. I'm like, it's over. You know, the great run of Anglican Unscripted is going to is hit the road bump and we're going to be derailed. There's no way we can find any news. Um, and Michael Curry was elected. Like, he's not going to be a, you know, a progressive like she was. And he hasn't been. He's, he's his own progressive. And I'm like, oh, I hope, you know, the bishops will come through for us. They do every time. Uh, George is kind of generalist. Uh, well, Kevin, we should ask him. And what what is God's preferred pronoun? Well, his preferred pronoun, as revealed in uh, starting in, in early Genesis, going all the way through Revelation, is male fathers. Um, pre- well, I thought God was a chicken. Chicken, uh, because doesn't right. the Psalm say that our our Lord is like a hen whose wings cover us? Because I, I thought God would then be a, a female chicken. Nope, that's a um, male rooster. Don't go with the hen thing. No, I, clearly uh, we have decided that you know, we're, we're now a, a nation, a world that doesn't understand our own gender. Um, is The gender politics is just amazing. And I'm not surprised that they're going after God. Uh, well, this is, it, let me just reassure people, it's not just the Episcopal Diocese of Washington. No. The Church of Sweden has come up with a new pronoun, hen. I don't speak Swedish, so no. I don't know what that sounds like. <laughs> to refer to the for the uh, uh, a neutral genderless God, so that we've got a new pronoun in some of their prayers. The Church of Finland is experimenting with this genderless pronoun, and the Diocese of Washington, two clergy uh, who represent predominantly gay and lesbian congregations, put forward this these uh, transgender rights things to. Uh, protect the people and their congregations from the mean of patriarchal language of the Hebrew scriptures. Now, Jeff Walton, who has done yeoman's work on these stories, and we love his work at uh, Anglican, Anglican Unscripted, he uh, did a little checking into these two priests' churches, and both of them have fallen in half over the past five, six, seven years. So, I, somebody must really have been offended because one church went from 150 to 75 uh, in the last few years because, and I, I guess the, the pronouns really have been wrecking their churches and now they're going to be filled again. Well, Do you think that's going to happen? Bishop Betty said we need to get rid of the, the elephant in the room. We need to address it. We need to talk about it. I don't know how gender became the elephant in the room for the Diocese of Washington. I mean, clearly the whole uh, gender politics is you must address people by their preferred gender. And we know through scripture, through everything that's been revealed, that God's announced preferred identity in gender is male. Um, Gavin Ashenden can speak to this much more eloquently than I can, but it is all part of what he calls the cultural Marxism of our age, where group identity trumps personal identity. Mm -hmm. Where, where you no longer have the freedom of speech, you must conform your speech to uh, prevent a, a hurt to other people. So, you know, what, along these lines, poor Chief Wahoo is gone. You know who Chief Wahoo is? The mascot of the Cleveland Indians? Yeah, boom. Well, the, he's gone yeah. because some Indian activists in Cleveland, I'm sure there are lots of them there, have felt that Chief Wahoo is a racial stereotype that denigrates Indians. Actually, it wasn't Native Americans. It was Native American activists who did it, but uh, um, the Native Americans have been kind of bum on this, and we don't care. Uh, Okay, as long as we're doing politics today, um, let's do gun control. Uh, If you want to head on over outside this country to a place called Pakistan, there's been a lot of persecution of Christians going on over there um, where a person will walk into a church with a suicide vest and boom, uh, take out 20, 30, 40 people. The government of Pakistan has said, we can help the Christian churches. We're kind of appalled this is happening. We don't know where these violent uh, Islamic extremists are coming from. Certainly not Pakistan. Let's do something about it. Let's let the churches through licensing arm themselves we will put some money into this we will train them and this should stop the bombings now 
I thought I'd bring this up with George. George, what's your thought on this? I think it is a wonderful step. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to look at history, we need to look at the culture of Pakistan, and we need to look at how people are. People uh, forget these days, uh, now that we're 40, 50 years on, that the civil rights movement in the American South was helped uh, by uh, allowing African Americans carry arms. White supremacists fought very hard to have gun control, saying that you had to have certain property qualifications, you had to be able to vote, you had to be able to read, you had to do this and do that, and therefore we're not going to allow the majority of blacks who want to own guns to have guns. Well, the reason why they did that was so that the Klan and other racist groups could terrorize them. Now, the federal government and some state governments fought back and upheld the right of African Americans to own guns in the same terms as white Americans. And the violence was so much less because white gangs could not terrorize indiscriminately churches and groups of people where there was somebody protecting them. This wasn't a license for blacks to go hunt whites or anything. This wasn't building up a black militia, but was rather allowing freedom of defense, freedom uh, to care for yourself and to prevent others from being hurt. And this is what's happening in Pakistan. Gun control always hurts minorities, whether they're racial, whether they're religious. It prevents self-defense. And the government in Pakistan is finally saying, look, we can't deal with this. We'll help you form a well-regulated militia, not to hunt Muslim terrorists, but to stand guard at your church doors to prevent somebody from walking in with an explosive vest and killing half the people there. Now, it's a good step. It is a good step. Now, I know from the time that you know I... Uh, revealed my gun on the show many me episodes with uh, Alan Haley uh, people were surprised that I wear a gun I do um, that I carry uh, all the time I do uh, and they were upset they said you know Jesus does not support that Jesus said you know uh, we don't use swords anymore Kevin and uh, uh, you should be ashamed to have a gun and stuff like that I said oh boy so some of us in our audience are Christian pacifists which is fine and good because I find through history pacifism and uh, arms have worked together. You know, we mentioned the civil rights uh, was certainly helped by allowing uh, African Americans to have guns, but it was also helped by the nonviolence of people like Martin Luther King. You know, they worked hand in hand. And uh, I think that can also be a mission. And Martin identity. Luther King didn't have a pistol, but some of those young men in back of him. They sure license. did, absolutely. Um, if you look at their, their their slash, you can see where they're packing. Um, it's it's interesting uh, to to see how this is working. The first thing the Nazis did was to confiscate the handguns mm -hmm. in Germany in 1933. It's one of the first acts. Um, the Jews felt that nonviolent resistance was the best way forward, and that's why Judaism was wiped out in Eastern Europe. When they rebelled, when they revolted, they actually had a chance of success, and that's the reason uh, Christian pacifism is a wonderful idea, but it's not related to Christianity, nor is it related to Christ's teachings. Uh, we have a theory of just war theory. We have a theory of proportional response. We have theories of self-defense. This is not new stuff, folks. And to say that uh, Jesus wants us to watch as other people are persecuted, destroyed, and killed, uh, and we do nothing to stop it, is a perversion, I believe, of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, from a theoretical standpoint, through, or a theological standpoint, I can read in the New Testament where if I am hurt by my enemy, I am allowed to retaliate uh, not just against my enemy, but three or four generations down. Uh, that's just a, a natural... Uh, Kevin, let's some, take something even more important. Yes. The Articles of Religion, which yeah. basically said, which basically, uh, they trash basically. socialism. Yes, it. That, 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 that our, our Anglican, if you cannot be an Anglican and a socialist and pro-gun control, because the Articles of Religion don't let you do that. Men's goods are not held in common, and the magistrate is allowed to enforce justice through laws, and you can arm and defend yourself. Mm. Ah. I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> oh well, but hey, that was fun. We, we probably pissed off half the audience. And, and it's Casual Friday. That's what we're here for. George, we're at 18 minutes. Finally, we got this show under. Only three tapings. Oh man, I'm Kevin Carlson. 
and I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 366 of Anglican Unscripted.